Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today we're back in the 148th scale house. It's been a while since I've done anything on this project so I thought it was about time that I gave it a go and to be fair my craft room is still a little bit in upheaval so being a smaller scale it doesn't take as much room to work on it. At least that's the idea. Now I'm going to be focusing on the bedroom today. This is the main bedroom and I'm afraid the camera is a little bit wobbly because I've got it set up differently to try and um, give you a good view of the room. Now as you can see there are already a couple of pieces in this room. There is the tall boy over here which came from the advent calendar and under the window is the dressing table stroke desk that I made ooh, about a year ago as one of my first ventures into this smaller scale. I'm going to begin today by going through the various kits that I've got again mostly from the Petite Properties advent calendar from last year to see what I've got that I could include and to figure what else I might want to include. So let's get on with it. I have repositioned the camera so it's back over my mat although the house is literally just out of shot over here so I can see what I'm dealing with. Now as I said I've been through the kits from the advent calendar from last year and I've picked out a couple of things that I think could work in the bedroom. I've got the bees bed kit which um, I got a couple of beds in the advent calendar one was medieval and then there's this one I think this one's going to be more suited and then I've got a pair of Berger chairs I hope that's how you pronounce it if it isn't for anybody that knows how it's pronounced and is grimacing at my terrible pronunciation I am sorry, I'm just kind of um, guessing here. So I'm going to make these up for now, I think. I think I'm also going to design and make my own wardrobe. It's going to be very simple. I think at 148 scale, it's acceptable if it's simple. Um, but I think it does need a wardrobe to go in there on the other side of the fireplace to where I've put the tall boy. And I may even um, attempt a couple of bedside tables, nightstands, something like that but we'll see how I get on. So I'm going to start off with these kits. As with the Petite Properties furniture kits I've done previously on this channel, um, inside the little um, package you get your instructions and you get your parts. Here I've got two pieces of different thickness mount board with the um, laser cut pieces and then I've got a wooden piece which in this case is the mattress of the bed which I just dropped. Now I need to decide if I'm going to go for the same kind of wooden look on this that I've gone for on the tall boy. Um, I think I'm going to and I think I'm actually going to start putting some colour on this before I start sticking it together. So to colour it, I'm going to be using a Pro Marker. I found that these are really, really handy. Um, unless you want a white finish, then you really need to use paint. But I find that the Pro Markers are great for getting a sort of um, wood veneer effect. So I'm going to remove these out of their mountings with my craft knife, and then I'm going to start adding some colour to them. Now that everything has had its first coat of the colour, it's time to start putting it together. And I'm going to begin with um, the base of the bed and the headboard, as per the instructions. And I need to put some glue on here. And I think I need to put some glue along this tab here. I'm going to put a little tiny bit on there just to try and um, 
make sure I drop everything. And I'm going to attach these together. Oh, that's a nice tight fit. I like so. Now that needs to um, sit and dry at 90 degrees and I need to remove the excess glue. As I always say, it doesn't look a lot. And it isn't a lot, but at a smaller scale, it's a bigger problem. So that's the first step. And the next step is going to be to stick these side pieces on. So I'm going to go and give these a second coat of colour and then I'm going to stick them in place. With the side pieces in place, it just remains to stick the footboard on to complete the basic um, bed structure. That's the word I want, structure. And I'm just going to put some glue on these bits. And then I'm going to pop him into place. On here, he will go with that's it. And again, I just need to um, remove any excess glue it's because the tolerances are minuscule, literally. And then um, tidy that up under there, although. Nobody is going to see underneath the bed. And then I have my basic bed structure ready for the um, detailing on the head and footboard. I completed the bed by adding the details to the head and footboards. And then I finished the mattress with a bit of fabric. Now I didn't wrap the fabric all the way around the um, mattress. I could have done but I just decided to put it over the what would be the visible top and the two sides and it's all glued in place and trimmed off quite neatly and it looks pretty good. I've also got um, a little pillow that I've made just by gluing some more of the same fabric and shoving a little bit of tissue paper into it to give it a bit of a lumpy shape. And then I made a bed cover using um, some floral fabric that I've got. Now this makes for a very big floral print in this scale, but I think it works. And I'm going to use it on a couple of other pieces in the room um, just to tie things together. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually add curtains to the windows, but if I do, I will be using another bit of this. Um, and all I've done is I've emmed it with some glue so that I don't actually have to have a bulky um, hem on it. And I've just sort of folded it kind of roughly and glued it in place. And I quite, look, quite like the look of how it's turned out. The second kit that I identified for use in the bedroom is the Berger chairs. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to have room for one or two. So I'm going to make and um, finish one and see how the sizing works and see what room I've got inside the room as to whether I leave the second one for now for a, another project or um, include that in this same room. So again, I'm going to start off how I did with the bed. I'm going to cut the pieces free from the, um, that's the right way around, from the sheet that they come on. And I'm going to give them the bits that need it, a basic um, coat of color, um, probably the same color as I've used for the other furnishings in the room. And then, um, We'll take it from there with the construction. I have coloured the base of the chair with the same alcohol marker. This is um, tan and I quite like the look that it gives. Um, 
for bedroom furniture, at least for this bedroom furniture. I've not yet covered the cushions, but I have covered the front of the seat. Now, when I was looking at these, um, I noted that quite often the seat bottom part is um, upholstered in the same fabric as the cushion, so I decided to go with that. Now, to stick it together, I need some glue, which of course is out of reach, and I need to put a bit of glue around the edge of this piece. I've got far too much on there. Got enough on there to do all of it. So I will just reduce the amount on there. And then what I want to do is get it the right way around is stick it onto the back flush with the base. And then I've got to fold the sides up. And if I've got it right, this will then fit flush with all of that. And it does. And I need my other cocktail stick and just remove that. And then I've managed to move it again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit it round so that it's in the right place, tidy it up for excess glue because as I keep saying at this scale a tiny little bit of glue is a big glaring mistake and then I've got the start of my chair I've got a little bit of extra glue on there that I hadn't noticed so I'll just clear that off as well. So there we've got the base of my chair. So I'm going to check that into the room and I'm going to have a look at upholstering the cushions. And here we have the finished chair. I covered both of the cushion pieces with the floral fabric and I think it's come out pretty good. Um, I'm going to at the moment stick with just one for the bedroom. I may make the other one for um, elsewhere in the house so it looks like there was um, two at one point and they've been moved about but um, I'm really pleased with how it's come out and um, yeah brilliant great little chair. I wanted a wardrobe for the bedroom um, but because it's going to be sort of hidden away in what will be like the back corner when you look at the room, I decided I could get away with something quite simple. And so I've made a very simple wardrobe. Um, excuse the sort of um, roughness of the colouring. I actually coloured it once it had been glued and the glue has um, discoloured in places. This is just a little box. Um, four side pieces, a front and a back and then I've put another piece of cardstock um, on the front which has been scored down the middle to suggest that there are um, a pair of doors. I think that's going to work quite well. It looks okay when I put it in the corner so I think this will do. Um, it's actually made out of um, some scraps of the cardstock that I usually print with, which is 160 GSM white cardstock. I used um, three pieces, three layers rather, um, stuck together for most of the pieces and then I think it's what's actually the top and the bottom are actually four just to give it some extra strength and then just a single piece on the front but I quite like it I think it's going to work it needs a bit of dis distressing as does everything else in the house but at the moment I'm concentrating on um, the actual contents and then I'm going to um, finish them off as they need to be done in a, um, a while. 
The final furniture element that I want to make for the bedroom is something to go beside the bed. Now, I could have made um, some little tiny boxy sort of nightstands but I wanted something a little bit different because some of the pieces I've got for this house are a bit different. And if you've been watching my videos, one of my recent videos, I've actually been playing with some um, Flamingo drink stirrers. Now this is the bottom of one of those drink stirrers. And I've got an idea that I can actually turn this into a, um, little side table quite easily I think. I think if I um, paint this and give it a little top, maybe a little bit of a cloth over it, I think I can make a little table to go on the side. But actually I'm going to make two. I've given the little side table a top made out of two punched circles um, from the scraps of 160 GSM cardstock I made the wardrobe from. Um, that's all it needs is just a couple of um, circles. Well, actually, it was some that I'd already stuck together, but it's two layers, um, and that's been glued to the top. And then I've put a little bit of glue on the bottom, which has actually allowed it now to stand up after a fashion. Well, it did. I can actually balance it. It will be eventually stuck in place in the room, so... Um, it may get stuck down sooner rather than later. So I'm going to go and I'm going to paint this. Um, I'm probably going to give it a coat of black paint to begin with and then um, I'm not sure. I don't think I want to finish it with the sort of wood look that I've got on everything else and I think I might pick out the gold that I've used for all the little um, um, draw fixings, handles and things. Um, so I might paint these gold. Um, we'll see how I get on. The table has been painted in black and then a coat of um, gold. It's a sort of old gold colour. And I quite like how it looks. It sort of looks like one of those kind of odd sort of side tables that you might get. And um, yeah it's going to work for what I want it to do. So what I've done is I have taken a, another circle the same size as those that make the top and I've stuck that to a piece of um, the fabric. I've then done a rough circle, it is only a rough circle, which I've um, I marked out with glue. I then cut on the glue so that I get a fairly um, secure edge and I'm going to use that to make a little short tablecloth because I want at least the bottom of this to be visible so that's going to go on there and it's going to be glued on and then I will arrange that so it'll come so far down like so um, but um, yeah I'm going to be doing that off camera because it is actually really fiddly trying to glue little pleats and folds into the fabric at this small scale. With the fabric over the top, a little lopsided I know but I think that looks a bit more realistic. You can see I've got the effect of a little tablecloth and that's going to look um, just right beside um, my bed. Now to finish it off, I have made a mock um, table lamp. Now this is just a stack of clear seed beads and then a little um, bit of um, cardstock wrapped around a skewer that I've stuck to another piece and cut out just so that I've got somewhere to stick it to. If you look from the top you can tell it's not a lamp but from the angle that most people are going to see it it's going to look quite effective and that's just going to be glued into place. I'm going to get a little bit of glue on the end of my um, little contraption here and I want this to be the sort of side that you see so I'm going to stick that 
like that. Now I've got to hold this now until the glue takes, which doesn't take very long. But I've now got my little um, side table to go by the bed. And this does actually, um, or did actually stand up on its own. Now it's a little bit top heavy, so it will actually be glued in place into the doll's house. But I quite like how that's turned out. It sort of works and it gives the effect that I want. And now that I've repositioned the um, camera again, you can see into the bedroom and you can see that it's now looking much more like a bedroom. Um, I like how the bed's turned out, the chair looks nice and even the little bit of fabric that I've added to the dressing table just adds that little bit of something. Um, I'm about finished with this room now, it needs a few more accessories. I want to put something on the wall above the fireplace, maybe some sort of knick-knack on the mantle and I might even put an old suitcase on top of the wardrobe if I can figure out how to make one that small. Um, it all also needs a certain amount of distressing to fit in with the story that um, the house is going to tell. But um, yeah, it's looking good. I hope that you've enjoyed um, another little trip into the 148th scale house. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, bye.